Mm, yeah, so uh, it should it should have been chapter twelve, but I I don't know. It's in the, it's indicated in chapter eleven, but no, okay. It, yeah, it should. I think it's twelve from the from the book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, exploratory uh, data analysis. I think uh, some of the, the the things that will be discussed in this chapter we have already seen previously. I think we have seen some of them. Okay. Is it in chapter two? Yeah, I think chapter two dealt with some of them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the the the, the learning objectives to recognize two types of uh, questions that will always be useful for making discoveries within your your data. What type of variation occur within uh, my variables, and what type of covariation occurs between my variables? So basically, that's it. The very the variations that occur within variables and the covariation that 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 occur between the the the, the variables. To to uh, explore the variation within the variables of your uh, observations, deal with outliers and and missing values, um, or unusual like. Uh, um, outliers and also uh, missing values in your in your data um, to, to also explore the co uh, covariation between the variables uh, of your observations recognize how models can be used to explore patterns in 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 your data but uh, as for the modeling part uh, I think they clearly mentioned that uh, the, the book is not going to uh, look at modeling so he just uh, briefly mentioned it some uh, at the last section. So that's the vocabulary that will be, be used. Uh, variables uh, 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 like quantity or uh, quality or property that can can that we can measure. Okay. Um, yeah, like um, assigning x to a particular quantity or or quality or something like this. Uh, mm. the, uh, value the state of a variable when you uh, you 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 measure it. Uh, uh, it can change. Observations uh, a set of measurements uh, made under similar conditions. Uh, one value per per, per, per variable, like uh, like the, the the various observations we have in the in the in the data, uh, like tabula tabular data observations of uh, of, of of variables, tidy data uh, like uh, one observation per row, one variable per column, um, one value per cell. So, so like the definition of tidy uh, boils down to what you you want your data to look like, something like this. So we start with looking at uh, variations, uh, like the tendency of uh, values of a variable to change between measurements. Basically, that's uh, uh, the, the variation. Uh, so um, we like the, the, in this chapter, the author is looking at two types of uh, variables, or like categorical variable, like uh, which could take Certain values like uh, like gender, example, and and also looks at numerical variable. I, I we could also consider them as a continuous variable, something like this. Yeah, but I think using numerical variables might be. So these are the two type of variable considered, the categorical and the the, the numerical variables. So we are looking at the data, the, the diamond data set, uh, with the 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 carrot, uh, um, particular. Uh, of 54 diamonds from the diamond data set. Since uh, th this particular carat uh, data, it's a numerical variable, we can, we can use histogram to sort of visualize it. And, and this is how the, the visualization looks like, like when you use the, the geom histogram. But it doesn't seem to, to be very informative like, like, like this. Because you know, y. if you look at the, yeah, we, if you look at the y, the the the, the x axis, we could see that it, it went up to four, and one would start wondering, but why all this? And since we don't have much, um, sort of, we, we can't tell much from this. It seems like yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So after visualizing the the variation, what should you look for in your in your plot? And uh, and what type of follow up question should 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 you ask? So 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 basically that's um, so in in a sense the, the the this particular chapter is like um, as a data scientist like if you look, if you get the data you you visualize it what are some of the questions you should ask and of course um, the the tax you have at hand 
but I, I, I think generally there are certain questions that you know applies regardless of the case. Okay. Right. So you just give, yeah, yeah. Like and, and feel free if you have any any. No, any no, no. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah. So it's it's just giving an overview of a of a bar chart and a, a histogram, saying that you know the the tall bars indicate like the the the, the, very, the values with the highest frequency and the short ones the less frequency. And if you don't see any bar, it indicates that there is no no data, something like this. To turn this information uh, into useful questions, look for the look for any anything unexpected. Which values are the most common? Why? Uh, which values are rare? Why? Uh, does that match your your expectation? Something like this. Can you uh, see any unusual pattern? Uh, what might uh, explain them? So 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 it's like in a sense we we should be uh, very open minded when looking at the data because once you have the data you have an expectation like an a priori what do you expect the the data to behave so if you are seeing something um contrary to that so it's like uh to like know the the, the the why why is it behaving like that as an example the histogram below suggests several interesting questions um why are there more more diamonds uh, uh at whole carrots and common uh, fractions of 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 carrots why are there more diamonds slightly to the right of each uh, peak than there are slightly to the to the to the left of each? So so basically that's it. You know we could see it's like a, seems to be a bit skewed towards the the right, something like this. Yes. Yeah. And what 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 else can we observe from this? It doesn't seem to. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. With the exception of being skewed to the to the to the yeah, right, the right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't tell us much. Yeah, clusters of similar values suggest that subgroups exist in your in your data, and this this we could see. You know, the skewed the skewedness is telling us that the it's like a, you have a, 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 a sort of a a cluster at one point. So to understand subgroups, we ask the following questions. Um, how are the observations between each uh, cluster similar to, to, to each other? How are the observations in separate clusters different from each other? How can you explain or describe the cluster? Why might the appearance of, uh, uh, of clusters be, be misleading? So uh, in this uh, other histogram, it uh, gives the eruption. It's like a, uh, an eruption time appears to be clustered into two groups. The, the first one, uh, there are short eruptions of around two minutes. And the second long eruptions like which go up to four, uh, five minutes but little in between. So, so basically that's it. And this had the, 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 the short eruption and this is the, the long eruption. So the, the data is like into, into clusters already. And the, the visualization helps us see, some, see this clearly. Um, but it, um, oh, sorry to interrupt. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Ahmad is here. I didn't oh, see Ahmad is around. <laughs> oh yeah, I <laughs> just going. So, um, yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying uh, because the the the, yeah. the histogram is in D, is D in in default uh, using the count method, which is a statistical transformation. Yeah. Um, do you, do you think that if we want a really like more um, more value from it, you sh we should jo we should change this transformation to just like um, a mean, getting the mean, like using the mean as an, uh, our main, um, our main like statistical thing to, to uh, judge. Yeah, like, like instead of, instead of the, instead of the, the counts. Yeah. We have the mean on the, like the Y axis, something like this. Yes. Mm. 
but will that help us uh, get more see more variation in the, in the data I think so yeah could, could you could could describe um how it's deviate yeah like, yeah yeah more and i think it will be useful i don't know if this is in the book or not but if it yeah, will be like, useful yeah I, I don't know whether they have something like that here yeah so yeah i don't think so, so. Yeah. Of, uh, evolve will prompt you to explore the relationship between the variables for example if you see if the values of one variable can explain the behavior of another variable uh, we'll get that shortly uh, something like this yeah i i, I would say if, if um, it would it, it will be more useful if we if we have a table in in, in this chapter where it's described what what geom uh, objects or yeah, geometric object to use for mm -hmm. each uh, category for example if we uh, for for numerical like uh, numerical variables we should, we could use like um as a st scatter plot uh like line line plot yeah. something like that and for uh, for categorical we could use like um a box plot or um like any type of uh, like you just to describe or map when yeah, you yeah, yeah. when you have a particular uh, value for a variable specific variable you what what you could use in terms of plots uh would be useful i think uh, yeah 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 sure Like uh, we look at the unusual uh, values, like outliers. Outliers are observations that are unusual, data points that uh, don't seem to to fit the, the the pattern we are observing. Something like this. I mean, they could uh, they could be cause they could be due to uh, data entry errors, but they could be something that is just part of the data and sort of giving us uh, new new dimensions to look at the data from. Usually difficult to spot out outliers in a big uh, like data set using a histogram. So so it's like a histogram would not be very helpful in if the, the data set is, is really big. For example, take uh, the distribution of uh, y variables from the diamond data set. Like the the, the only evidence of outlier in the uh, is the unusual y limits in the x. Yeah, we have the the y x the the x y limit uh, going up to like sixty, and and like from this we can notice any outlier using the histogram something like this. So many observations in the uh, common beans uh, that the than the rare bean are very short difficult to, to to see them so because these are the common beans so we are only seeing them and then um, in a sense it's not showing us any uh, outlier yeah and it, it, it doesn't yet describe the point so yeah. we don't see the point we see the aggregated like uh, yeah thing yeah The, the the coordinate Cartesian also has a, a an x limit, so with this now we are able to see the using this um, um, this function, this um, yeah, we are able to see the the outliers. We we notice that we have a, a zero entry, which uh which is not correct. Is that outlier? Yeah yeah outlier. We have seen zero entries, and it's like we have a couple of zero entries, so that's not correct. The the weight cannot be zero, and we are having like uh, because it's in millimeters, so we are having like more than thirty. That seems to also be on a high side and close to sixty. So with this uh, this uh, function, we are able to see more the 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 we are able to see the outliers. Yeah. 
I think this is uh, related to the coordinate system in the last chapter, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could like, we change the coordinate system and then we zoom, zoom in or something like that. Yeah, 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 that's it. Also has a X limit argument for when, uh, for when you need to zoom into the X, um, like axis. The variable Y measures the dimension of the, the diamonds in millimeters. It, it allows us to see the, the outliers like, like mentioned previously. And that's, that's, the, that's the data, that's, that's the outlier. So this were the zeros we were seeing. Like the first nine entries. It also mentions that it's a good practice to repeat your analysis with and without the, the outliers. Uh, if they have uh, minimal effects on the results, you could uh, omit them. Like if removing them will not um, um, change the results completely, then it makes sense to just omit the outliers. Um, but if on the other hand, it has substantial effect on the results, then if we want to remove them, we have to give just like, um, maybe theoretical justification or something like this for why we are trapping them. Um, it's still um, still on the outliers, like two options of, uh, sort of there are two options to deal with unusual, um, unusual values, drop the entire row, like, but, but uh, they don't recommend this, like, they don't recommend like dropping the entire row. Like in our, in our previous case, we just drop um, from like from the, the third entry to the 20th entry, something like this. But they don't recommend that. Replace uh, the bad data with, uh, with any like sort of, yeah, we sort of replace it with a- So um, I forgot this, this between is a function that just try to do um, you know, uh, it's saying um, in this column Y, um, yeah. filter the value between three to twenty, uh, right in the row. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, so this, yeah. okay, cool. That's between. handy, you know, the between. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like um, I have not been using this because and in this something you know maybe it's new or something like that. Okay, thank you. Mm. And it says that ggplot2 will, will give you a one in one values are missing. You can suppress uh, them with uh, setting NA to, to, to true. Yeah. Like uh, now we look at, uh, previously we were looking at uh, variation. Um, like that is the, within the data, now within the, 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 the variable. So now across, uh, uh, different variables. We look at the covariation um, tendency of uh, values of uh, different variables to vary together in a related way. Uh, visualizing covari uh, covariance depends on two types of uh, variation in the in the pair. So um, covariation, what can we say? Like, what, why do we, when do we need it? Like, when is it useful? You know, so if I have data, what will it show us like of values vary, to vary together in a related way? I mean, this English, I, I didn't understand it in, in you know, simpler way. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so what does it do, covariation? Um, I think it's, it's, it's maybe yeah. like describing relationships, something like that. Uh, like the associ is this association relationship is it neg is negatively affecting uh, uh -huh. each other or positively? Okay. Yet? Yeah. So it's okay. like it's, uh, something like that. I think. Mm. Yeah. 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 So yeah. if we have like uh, two variables, we want to see like the the relationship whether something affects something. If some one grows, the other get negative or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how do you behave like over time? I, I, it's, it's similar to the concept of like uh, correlation, something like this. Yeah, so, yeah. Like correlation, covariation, co covariation. I think uh, it might be very similar to the the concept of correlation. Yeah, I think it's some type. Yeah, some type. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Yeah, where you see how 
two variables uh, uh, behave over time? Is it that when we increase like x, y also increases over time? If that's the case, then you know you realize that there is some um, connection, sort of. Uh, a, a, a categorical and a numerical uh, variable. So like if we have a categorical and a numerical variable and we want to see whether there is co-variation between these two variables, uh, let's explore how the price of diamond varies with its uh, quality. So, you know, like this, uh, this is a, a good example because you, 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 there is always a connection between price and, and quality, you know. Like the quality is measured by cut using the 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 uh, the, the geom uh, pulley uh, function. Uh, I think the break is the frequency. I think right. Huh? It's, it stands for frequency is. Ah uh, uh, yeah, frequency yeah. is it the frequency poly, poly polygon poly or something like that. Yeah. yeah, something like this. Yeah. So so we can see here the price is the 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 the, the categorical variable. And then we have the, the count, which is the numerical variable. I think the price is the numerical price. And the cut is. Uh... Yeah, price, but, but it, it's, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, the cut, yeah, cut, the cut is the, yeah, the. The categorical. One. Yeah, the, cut, the categorical variable, yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. So we can see. Yeah, we can see the, the the very good, and the ideal has the like the highest. Uh, the ideal price is the highest one, and yeah. it, it could be affected by outliers or something because. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this, uh, I think the idea is trying to say so that like plotting this like this doesn't seem to give you a lot of information because I'm still, still trying to see what information is this, uh, sort of this, this plot uh, giving us, you know? Yeah, it could show, I think if, if it, um, is it line blot? Yes, I, I think line blot is, will also be uh, the same, but, I think it's 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 boils down to what type of analysis do you do? Do you do do are you doing like um, uh, univariate analysis or bivariate or multivariate? So here I think because we do I think bivariate because we have uh, like one one numerical value and one categorical. Uh, multivariate will be one numerical and two or three, yeah. uh, something like that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, categorical. And we we try to, we have a plot to, to see all the overview of the data uh, between and the relationship and how it's related to uh, the, the variable relates to each other. So so yeah. it, I think this one is bivariate. Um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So like the, 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 the count is like sort of the, the frequency, sort of. What? Like the count here, like uh, represents the frequency, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you represent the aggregated value, like um, the sum? I think that sum of each uh, each category. Yeah, that's the frequency, right? The total. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The frequency. Yeah. yeah. The frequency. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So this count is not you. Um, you didn't give like. Can you go off to the code? Can you go up? So you see, like this one, like. You know, uh, so it automatically put this as a count. It's a frequency. So, like you are not the one that provide this. You know, uh, the yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but right you could you could provide it. Uh, yeah, you could provide. But yeah, you could provide. But in this sense, um, you know, um, it the automatically default. uses yeah. because it's a count. That is why it put, which is also in ways um, frequency. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, and you could so, you could change it for like to see uh, the mean, uh, like uh, at the mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly, or exactly. The median or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it will be more useful, I think, uh, because it, we when we're dealing with the mean, we say we 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 deal with data on average. We see the average of stuff, so it it may be more useful than just counting uh, just and aggregating. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, a visual simpler plot uh, for exploring this relationship using side by side a block, box plot. So basically, it's arguing that uh, a, a, a box plot might be more helpful. It might sort of show us more, more variation. And um, yeah, and, and like, uh, yeah, it seems to be much more clear with the box plot. Yeah, and you could you could identify quickly the. Um, yeah, yeah, we could see that the premium has the the highest price, you know. Yeah. Because here I was really struggling to see which one has the highest price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's it's very important to, to like how how we communicate. I think there's yeah, a factor yeah. for communication or something like yeah. that, and yeah. you have to communicate your result to uh, the end user because. Um, it could be it's easy to just cho choose like a plot to show things of and and the other side will not understand it because they are not caring about the details and we, we they won't just see the result and quickly and as clearly as possible yeah so yeah yeah and you could see as uh, outlier also uh, uh yeah, yeah 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 you could see the outliers as well yeah Yeah, but box plots are, are, are much more compact, uh, so we can more easily compare them and fit more one plot, one on one plot. We can also see trends um, by um, adjusting the code a bit. We could see the trend it, it, it takes. So the, the key takeaway here, it's like, uh, um, it's uh, like if you have uh, a categorical, like if you have uh, um, categorical and numerical variable, it's it's preferable to put the categorical variable on the x-axis and then the numerical or continuous variable on the y-axis. And like using uh, box plots might uh, help you easily get or quickly get more insights of the, the data and says, you know, we could um, get more references from here. So when we have two uh, categorical variables, uh, it's uh, to visualize uh, the covariation between two categorical variables, uh, count the number of observations for uh, of each uh, combination of uh, levels. This could be done either using the, the built-in germ count uh, or by using the dplyr account and then the geom title. So I, I, didn't, I didn't bring these uh, uh, graphs, but I think we could easily see them from the, the book. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So when we have like two categorical variables, mm -hmm. we have uh, we have a uh, count, like we have cut, and and that's cut, and we also have uh, the the, the color. I, I mean. You cannot yeah. use this with categorical body. I think that's what he's saying, right? Uh, so it's to visualize the correlation within uh, categorical variables. You will need to count them. Then you will need to count the number of of each combination of levels of these categorical variables. Like okay. one way to do is to use the the, the built-in uh, geom count. Like so, 
Yeah. Are they like um? Because it's hard to like comprehend this. Uh, there is. Okay, how to read this? Like. Um... So I, I think the 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 color, uh, the color the color yeah, but. Uh. It's this color and thing. cuts, and uh, yeah. and I think the the count is there count. So it's like saying the size of each circle in the plot displays how many observations occurred at. Yeah, but it's very hard to read. Yeah, yeah, like it's uh, yeah. I mean, to <laughs> see what they are trying to explain here. Yeah, because it's um, we depending on the size, not the color itself. Yeah, the, the, uh, not the column color, the, the color of like colors. Uh, so the colors is mainly we talked about uh, last in last chapter the aesthetics and how it how we could use uh, things to differentiate uh, yeah. variables. So uh, here here we're just depending on the the number of and the size, which is yeah. like very difficult to comprehend for anyone for the end user. So it's uh, I think yeah. we this is not used too much. Yeah, in, this is not very useful. Yeah. Another approach of exploring the relationship between these variables is computing the count, like using the diplier to com compute the count separately, and then use the the GRAM title to fill uh, aesthetics. Uh, but this also doesn't seem to be very helpful either. Yeah, I would say if you um, if I, if I'm one that trying to to, to see the um, two categorical, I will. I will go to like um, clustered bar, bar plots or something like that. It will uh, be more useful, and uh, the the color will uh, it be visual. Yeah. And we see the different part. We don't need like um, like a sophisticated one, just uh, a stacked or a clustered bar chart. So yeah, I I would try to do it to do this. Uh, I don't remember if it's. Uh, it exists in geom i think it exists but we talked about uh, last chapter right we tried like um a stacked bar chart right um but i don't know if it's uh if it's clustered yeah it could be clustered yeah 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 this this doesn't seem to be very helpful <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so uh, that's it. Uh, like two numerical uh, variables. When we have two numerical variables to visualize this, we uh, use the the following. We could use the uh, the geom point, which might um, show us like uh, patterns. Like uh, a, a good example of this could be scatter plots. Yeah, and we could use the the geom bin two and the uh, the geom uh, hex. Um, the the geom bin two uh, D and the Geom hack, divide the coordinate planes into 2D beams, and then use uh, a field color to display how how many points fall in each uh, in each beam. Um, or we could like use like a line chart also to show that this is. I think this could be used in time series. Like uh, we saw the time change, uh, and it, and they they are both uh, numerical, so we see. The, def the the deviation or the changes over time with um with the line plot so yeah it could, it could be useful to use also the line plot or like, a human. yeah yeah so that's the jump point uh, like a, a, sc a scatter plot something like this yeah but but I, I i think it's arguing that as the data gets bigger the scatter plot might also not be very helpful yeah yeah, it gets, you might it gets crowded it's, very, yeah, very it's, easily. It's going to be so crowded that you will not, it will not give you much information. So, yeah, then then it suggests that the alpha, you know, it makes it a bit lighter. But even with this, it's not very informative as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then that's why they suggested this, uh, this these two guys, the these two functions. Sorry, mm -hmm. the. The, the geom 2D and the geom hex, which uh, divide the coordinate into two beams and uh, use colors to fill. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Like like this, I think this is quite good. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite good. Quite good. Okay. Yeah. 
and I think um, previously this part is in chapter somewhere in the beginning and they added some stuff because it was not exactly the way it was um you know yeah they added some stuff yeah because i was i, I edited the, the the previous slides but i realized that a lot of adjustments had yeah increased in this chapter they had made a lot of adjustments mm -hmm. yeah okay. like this, this part i'm not sure even if it was in the order mm -hmm. yeah all right thank you very much yeah. Okay, so uh, that's really helpful and useful. Um, thank yeah. you for that, app, though, and uh, thank you for volunteering. Yeah, yeah. It's not yet done. I think this is the last part. Oh. Yeah, that's oh. the pattern. Yeah, that's the pattern. Oh, okay, that's patterns and models. Okay. You know, patterns and models, yeah. So right. patterns in your data provide clues uh, about uh, relationships. It reveals covariation co co in, your, in your data set. Like uh, ask yourself, could this pattern be due to coincidence, like random randomness? If it's, I think if it's if if it's uh, out of pattern occur because of randomness, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, because I, I think uh, dice. I, I read somewhere that you know the guy says uh, it's because of randomness. You you have data scientists. He said if there were no randomness, then you don't need uh, you don't need data scientists because everything will be. We just, I mean, clear, but because of randomness, you need a probability to, to, to make estimates, and then you need data scientists to do stuff like this. I, I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm reading now a book called like uh, Business Analytics uh, or Introduction to Business Analytics yeah. to Business Analysts. And uh, they describing there, there was, there's a particular chapter called uh, Representing un Uncertainty, which is yeah dealing with this kind of uh, randomness representation and yeah. they try to visualize or giving you a mental model to to um, to make the concept more clearer on how to represent randomness and to con just represent it in, in your analysis uh, and make useful from it make useful thing uh, and it's very useful to, to to read about this stuff because we're trying to, uh, uh, like, if for business people, they don't care about any anything you say other than the thing that you it will affect their business. So yeah, if yeah, you yeah. say, <laughs> yeah, so if uh, if you if you said that a randomness or something like uh, some jargon that they don't understand, they don't care. Yeah. It, uh, but it will be useful to to sell to say that to them or communicate to them that uh, some randomness happening in this uh, uh, and is it due, due to a pattern that happened to business yeah. and it's it's explainable in somehow so it's trying to have uh, give you a mental model which is very useful um, to deal just to, to communicate to a business people or stakeholders yeah sorry you said what's the name of the book yeah. it's um let me let me see uh it's yeah maybe can you remember if you just uh put the title in the chat yeah 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 it's very good very good and i would um i say i saw i'm thinking of uh like uh, uh recommending it in uh, the in that request books yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead it's very good uh it's, uh it's called a uh, business analyst introduction to business analytics it's, uh, it's yeah it's um it's by adam flesh the shaker or something like that is it, is it free Can yeah you it's free it in the chat yeah, yeah, yeah. In the chat. it's, it's free, free yeah. and uh, it's it's it just done uh last september or october last this like it's, it was very very soon uh which is which um and also they they talk more about uh, like the practical thing of using R to, into business, like how to how to get quickly uh, into like describe a mental model to just give you um, a prediction or and it's used the TensorFlow, COSAC, uh, Greta, uh, some kind of Bayesian statistics. Uh, so it's it's come some kind of Bayesian inference book. I hope it's not somehow very advanced because I, I don't think if it's advanced, someone like me might follow, you know? 
<laughs> uh, I, I don't think it's advanced because they uh. say in the um, in the the beginning the it, it just if you don't know anything it's just introduction so it's it's because it's come oh. from the beginning and that's why it's uh, it's having like four or six seven chapter to introduce r and ggplot two chapters then they get dig deeper into the concept also very interesting it it's um uh it's it have the like uh a, a YouTube playlist, which corresponds to every chapter from the author itself. So it's very, very good. Uh, so you can read the chapter and then uh, see the video with it. So uh, yeah. Is it the author? Is it the author that? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's the same author, yeah. The okay. author is the, the... Oh, do you read the book before? I'm reading it now, but I didn't read it before. Uh, I'm reading it now because it's. I found it very very interesting to just stay practical as as you could. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't just describe things and that's yeah. not useful. So yeah. he is like he works as a business consultant or something like that, or, and he is also a professor. So uh, I I would say he know he know his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like he's in the in board walls, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like to, to just wrap up, uh, it, 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 how, how can you describe the relationship between the pattern, whether it's, a, it's like a positive or a negative relationship, something like this, you know? Um, 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 how strong uh, is the relationship uh, implied by the, the pattern? Yeah, like the, this idea of correlation coefficient, so stuff like this, I think. Uh, um, what other variables might affect uh, the, the, the relationship? Yeah. I, I guess this is why it doesn't go into modeling because it's a, I think it's a bit more complex. Does relationship change if you look at uh, individual sub uh, groups of, of the data? Uh, so this the the, the uh, scatter plot of the eruption we we shot. You know previously we we displayed this uh, eruption using a histogram, and we can still see the two so, subgroups. It, it mentioned a little bit of uh, of modeling. Models are. Uh, a tool for extracting patterns out of data. Uh, it's hard to understand relationship uh, between the 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 cut and the price. Like you know, here we are struggling with the. It was not the relationship was not very clear. You know, the the cut and the price. But it's I given that you know you could build a, a model, um, which could uh, help to 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 do this. But since uh, uh, it's like the book is not going. Um, details into modeling, it just mentions that, that you could use um, models to, 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 to help you see this. And this was the modeling part they did, and the, they were able to see more, more of the, the relationship between the, 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 the carrot and the, and the, and the, and the price uh, like this. So they mentioned that we are not discussing modeling in this book because understanding what models uh, and how they work, it's easiest once you have tools for data wrangling and programming in hand. Uh, so, so that's it. Uh, any comments or suggestions? Yeah, good. No, Thank good, very good. Thanks, thanks for yeah. for okay. presenting this afternoon. Um, so, um, we have the next chapter. Um, Some communication. Let's see. Yeah. Um, if somebody would volunteer for me, uh, I will be quite busy next week, so I will not be able to present um, the next two couple of chapters. So if anybody is free, um, can volunteer. Oh, this is also a new chapter. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. yeah I, I, ah. <laughs> I, I guess you might want to give it a try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite new, you know. It looks oh, and big. it's big. Oh my. Yeah, yeah, it's this is a long chapter, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you oh. this it will be very like detailed. Yeah, I think I think something this might be uh, And I think this is one of the useful the, what it, what it's, I was talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know you mentioned about this data communication, you know. Yeah. Audience. Yeah, you mentioned this. This chapter is huge. Oh, and it's what it, it, it like, like, zoom in zoom in, in, you know, the zoom in, in stuff you mentioned it's yeah yeah and it, it goes to team really useful yeah i know this chapter is really i think this will will give you a like a gg plot yeah, yeah very intense class course yeah
and you yeah. could use it in uh, like okay. high Tuesday or something. Okay. Yeah. What will be like um next week Thursday um and Saturday? What will be the date? Um. So will be like um, let me check. Um. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be on the on the fourth. Fourth. Yeah. Hmm. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I have deadlines. Then. <laughs> Um, so let okay, let me volunteer to see if I'm not be able to, you know, put it them together. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Yeah, because like I have um, a lot of uh, deadlines on the pad, and also yeah. So let me volunteer to see what I can can do because it's exciting chat as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks really exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ahmad, um, Abdul, thank you very much. Um, also, um, if you feel like it, because last time, oh. Last time Ahmad was saying like maybe we can schedule this um chap this time. Um, but John was saying it's gonna be a bit, you know, um, you know, awkward. Uh, he doesn't want like have back to back uh, Zoom sessions. Yeah. Um what do you think, Ahmad? Um, do you think we should also find um suitable time for you because it's late for you? Um, I'm happy for us like to tend to find another better time that works for you best. Uh, what do you suggest? Uh, no, no, we, we can stay at the same time. It's, there's no yeah. there's no need. We can stay at the same time. No problem. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much um, for joining and uh, we see you inshallah next week.